So of course, I finally decided to review a Clint Eastwood movie, and it ends up being a buddy cop action movie co-starring Charlie Sheen, Raul Julia, and Sonia Braga. This is The Rookie. Veteran LAPD cop Nick Pulowski has had an unremarkable career in the auto theft division, but when his partner is killed, Pulowski is settled with a rookie detective, David Ackerman. Going against orders, Pulowski is unwilling to let Strom, the man who killed his partner, be someone else's case, and drags Ackerman along on his rough and tumble ride through the Los Angeles underbelly. However, when Ackerman's failures allow Pulowski to be taken hostage by Strom, he must overcome his fears and rattle some cages in order to save his partner and bring down this desperate and dangerous criminal. So you're asking yourself, why this film to spotlight going into any bit of Eastwood's filmography? Why showcase this thing above all the other fantastic work he's done throughout his whole career? Well, this film just fucking entertains the shit on me. I love this movie. I have a great time watching this. Whenever this thing's on cable, whenever I see any bit of this film, it just brings a great smile to my face. And this is interesting type of film in the way that it slightly predates all the kind of like real powerhouse Eastwood Academy Award winning director type of stuff in his filmography and it's just Eastwood playing around in a fun genre. He's not trying to do anything groundbreaking or innovative or anything kind of big and heavy or whatnot. He's just having a good old fun time which seems like everyone in this film absolutely had a blast doing this film and doing a buddy, kind of, buddy cop action movie really hinges so much on the chemistry between the leads of the film. And I will tell you that Eastwood and Charlie Sheen have great chemistry in this film. They work off each other so very well because I think their characters are written in very interesting type of ways. Eastwood's character of Nick Polofsky is a very... He's that typical type of gruff, seasoned cop and whatnot who has a bit of a wise-ass attitude. He's kind of snarky. He's a bit of a... Guy who's uh, he's a bit cynical, a bit sarcastic and everything. But he's not the sharpest guy in the in the box. He's not the sharpest tool in the box. He's not the smartest guy around. He's a little little blunt and whatnot. So just like he's not the most perceptive, smartest type of guy around. And you got David Ackerman portrayed by Charlie Sheen, who's very much that extremely green cop. But he's a smart enough type of guy to work off of the character of Polofsky. It's just a nice type of d dynamic between the two characters that one of them is a little bit sharper, a little bit smarter, but he's not very seasoned whatnot, but Pulowski is kind of this kind of set in his ways type of guy who's like, he doesn't like working with a partner or whatnot. That, that, sort of cliches in the genre, they kind of work very well with the ways these characters are written and the dynamics that they have. A guy who's very seasoned versus a very guy, guy who's very green, doesn't have a lot of experience. Interesting dynamics and in how they wrote these type of characters to make them very interesting, real fun type of characters to really invest yourself in as the story goes along. And it's because even though it is a very fun film, there is some very good dramatic qualities in the film with the character of David Ackerman, who's dealing with a lot of personal emotional issues of sorts between you know, his past and everything with his family, uh, because he feels he blames himself for the death of his his uh, brother when, when they were kids and everything. So it carries this certain guilt around, this certain fear of everything. And so there's little beats throughout the whole film that Charlie Sheen handles extremely well. He is so fresh, so smart, so funny, and so very capable of everything this film throws at him. He become he comes out of this film looking like a complete star to me. I think he just absolutely top of his game type of work here. And it's just great that he does have that arc, that he goes from this very type of very green, sort of naive type of new cop and everything, and he morphs and evolves into this much more harder, tougher type of guy who's just like, he's sick of being afraid and it's time for other people to start being afraid of him. He takes everything by the gullet, right by the jugular and everything, and he starts going out there and starts raising hell by the end of the film. It's just this great arc that the character has and it just makes for a much more entertaining, interesting type of character. And all the while you get Plofsky there, kind of, again, cracking wise and everything, having all of the, a lot of great dialogue in this film that just really makes it fun. Very humorous type of stuff going on. But when you really talk about really fun, humorous, quotable dialogue, you really have to go towards Raul Julia's performance in this film because I think he just relished every second playing this villain in the film. 
I think he's just fantastic in this movie. He has so much absolute fun and joy in the charismatic performance he puts on in this film. And that German accent he puts on with this character just makes his, his dialogue so much more quotable. Whatever it is, it just every little thing that he does makes it a fantastically fun, entertaining villain that you can still take seriously, take him with a lot of threat and weight and everything, but he is having so much fun in this role that it's just a joy to watch, in my opinion. But then you got a bit of the flip side of the coin to that with Sonia Braga in this film, who is absolutely sizzling hot in this movie. She is seductive, dangerous, she is femme fatale perfectly. She is so good in this film, and every step of the way she becomes... She comes off, first off, as a very tough, dangerous woman that is going to not be afraid of anyone. She is going to fucking shoot you in the back if it's necessary. But there is one scene in this film opposite Eastwood that is just so fucking hot. I remember this because I saw this film. We rented this film on VHS probably right when it came out. It's so around 91, 92. I still remember this is the most this is the scene that stuck with me. It's sizzling fucking hot and it just like this scene really puts it right off to red hot meter and everything. She is fantastic in this movie. She is just oh god is she good in this movie. And this film does have a very strong supporting cast. Like I said, you got Tom Skerritt as David Ackerman's father who does a fantastic job. Since when has Tom Skerritt not done a solid performance in the film? I can't name one. And you got Laura Flynn Boyle as Ackerman's wife. She does a fantastic job in the film, too. And there's just a lot of great, solid uh, supporting cast with the villains and the cops and everything. everything. Everyone's just, they fill the roles very well. They have a lot of zeal and vibrance and passion doing every little thing that they have to with every character that they're given. It's just a very fun, vibrant movie. That's the way I can just explain the whole movie to you. It's just, it's entertaining. Everyone's putting all their passion into it. Everyone's doing a great, fun time making this film. But of course, it is an action film, and you've got to have some really good action to go along with all this fun banter and all this humorous stuff. And I think Eastwood is a very solid, capable action director. He puts together some very good, very solid action sequences. There's a lot of good car chases right from the beginning of the film, all on the highway. There's some motorcycle stuff. There's some very good gunplay in the film. There's a lot of good, solid action sequences that are shot extremely well, and... It's really nice to see that Eastwood, he's a type of director that once he finds really good talent, he sticks with it behind the camera. Because the cinematographer who shot this film, John N. Green, has probably shot every Eastwood movie from Heartbreak Ridge up to Space Cowboys. And it's great to see that Eastwood is that type of filmmaker when he finds the perfect talent to work with him and click with him the right ways behind the camera. He sticks with them for a very long time and uses them on numerous projects. And the same can be said for the film's composer who creates a very unique jazzy type of score that is insanely catchy to me. I love the horn sections, the rhythms, the beats, everything that this score puts into the film is very unique for the genre. You're really not going to find another action film that sounds like this. And just, it's so catchy. Once you hear those, hear the rhythms, hear the real catchy swagger that this film has is just going to stick with you the whole way through and just creates such an original type of flair for the film that I just it just makes the film just so much more special and unique to me and overall the film just is so much entertaining fun like I said there's some very solid action sequences but it is the chemistry that is fantastic between this cast and the humor that is so well written and so well executed by very great acting talents in this film that just makes it such an absolute joy to watch for me. I just Whenever this thing shows up on cable, whatever it is, it just grabs me and just like I have a big fun smile on my face. I have probably said fun about a hundred times in this review and just that's what this film does for me. It just is so entertaining. It's just so humorous, just like makes me laugh, just makes me smile, just have a good time when I watch this film. It's not, like I said, it's nothing special, it's nothing unique, it's not a lethal weapon, it's not the last Boy Scout, it's just a fun little film that Eastwood made to have fun in the genre and just have a very good, great time making it and hopefully everyone who sees it also has a great time seeing it. It made about 20 million at the box office, but I don't know what the budget was to know if it was as much of a rousing success as I think it should have been. But uh, if you guys have seen The Rookie, I would love to hear your comments about the film. I think they're just so much great 
humorous bits in this film that just really just sparked me off. I quote this film a good amount of times. There's just, there's enough things with the ver the uh, German accent, Raul Julia, and a lot of the quippy, wise ass, dry dialogue that uh, Eastwood throws out there. It's just a lot of great characters that are written in this film, filled up with actors with a lot of passion and vibrance. Oh, everyone on the top of their game just doing a great, entertaining job that I just absolutely love. So, if you've seen the film, I'd love to hear your comments. Or if you just want to talk about little Charlie Sheen or your favorite Eastwood films, there's obviously the guy's got have, has had a ginormous career. Sergio Leone films, Dirty Harry films, Unforgiven, all the films he's directed. The guy's had such a vast filmography that you could just talk about him till the ends of time. And feel free to use this comment section to be your forum for that. So, I will get out of here. And basically, yeah, I recommend this film as a greatly entertaining, fun ride. Because the film just has, like I said, the action is just greatly paced. It's tightly, tightly edited, greatly well shot. There are some great explosive payoffs in the film. Everything it just hits it right in the right money. Just make it a great, great experience all the way through. So, before I repeat myself any longer... I'm going to cut myself off here and uh, hopefully I'll be back shortly with a few more exciting and uh, fresh reviews for you guys. Until then, take care and uh, hit some like buttons, subscribe, hit some comments, and share the likes around. If you want more people to see Forever Cinematic Reviews, I would very much appreciate your support. So take care. Bye-bye.